Welcome to the guide for SCP-106. This will talk about things such as recontainment procedures, off the pocket dimensions, and more. SCP-106 is a Keter class SCP located in Con X, near O96's containment. It appears to be an elderly humanoid, with white glowing eyes, and what looks to be a World War I era doughboy helmet. SCP-106 can pass through doors and come in through the ground, leaving behind a dark black substance behind that can slow the player down upon contact. If you are caught by 106, you will be pushed into 106's pocket dimension, where you will have to pick from 1 of 8 randomized paths to escape. If you escape, you will be brought to 106's lower containment. When stepping into the containment zone, you will find a staircase leading down to a testing area. Going past the piston doors, you will be met with a massive containment area, and you will have to take a path leading over to the lift and the chamber control. The platform is very dangerous, as some parts do not have railings and you can easily fall off the edge. After making it to chamber control, there will be a room with many controls and levers. This is where you can manage the recontainment process of SCP-106. Stepping out to the lift area, you will see a lift going to 106's lower containment. The lower containment area is where 106's containment room is. It is suspended by 6 electromagnets and surrounded by 11 massive lights, which can be activated in case of a soft breach. The inner containment room contains SCP-106 and the femur break. Now we will be talking about recontainment. 106's containment procedure is a bit more complicated than most of the other SCPs, but it is still pretty easy to do. 106 can breach from a power outage, manually turning off the magnets as a CI, or leading 106 out of containment. Recontainment will require two people, one in chamber control and one in femur breaker. Recontainment from chamber control will need you to send the femur breaker sacrifice down to lower containment. You will need to have the door open, indicated by the blue light on the button, the power turned on, and the magnets turned off. Once the sacrifice sits in the femur breaker, you can pull this lever in order to start recontaining. After a few seconds, you will hear 106 enter the containment chamber. This is when you will need to turn on the magnets. Make sure the door is closed when the magnets are on, or you can be soft breached pretty easily. In case of a soft breach, you can turn on the lights, and you will go back into containment. Recontainment containment from a sacrifice perspective is pretty straightforward. You go down into the containment room and you sit down. If there is someone in chamber control, you will have your femur broken, and a 106 will take you into his pocket dimension. There are 9 pocket dimensions that you may encounter after being caught by 106. After choosing one of the 8 paths, you will be teleported to one randomly. One of them is the throne room, an inescapable pocket dimension. You will find yourself in a room with pillars and a staircase leading up to what seems to be an entity on a throne. Immediately after going into the pocket dimension, a pool of blood will start rising. If you want to survive for longer, you can climb the stairs. If your head goes below the blood level, you will die shortly after. There is currently no possible way to escape this pocket dimension. The second inescapable pocket dimension is the cage. Here here you will take more damage, and you will succumb very quickly if you don't have a medkit. It appears to be a cube-shaped cage with nothing but darkness outside. Another pocket dimension is the quick escape. After going down one of the paths, you will be teleported out instantly. This is currently the easiest path to escape. A more difficult pocket dimension is the maze, or back rooms. You will find yourself in a maze-like space, and you will have to run around and look for a corridor with a bright light at the end of it. I would recommend having a medkit and turning up your exposure in the game settings to see better. The fifth pocket dimension is the walls pocket dimension, which appears to be a narrow bridge with moving walls blocking the path to escape. You can easily walk off so be careful. The walls can also push you off and they get progressively more difficult as it continues. After making it past the walls, you can escape. Another pocket dimension is the corridor, or hallway dimension. It appears to be a long hallway, with one room to the right that serves no purpose. At the end of the hallway, there will be an exit. There is a sound that will play behind you that might be an entity chasing you, but I'm not entirely sure what happens if you stay still or go towards it. This isn't really a pocket dimension, but there is a chance when going down a path that you can be teleported back to the main path room. The only way to escape this is by choosing another path. One of the most difficult pocket dimensions is the trenches. This appears to be a trench from World War I and includes orange semi-transparent entities that will do a lot of damage to you upon contact. After running through the trenches, you will have to jump down a hole and you will escape. The last pocket dimension that you may get from SCP-106 is the arrows pocket dimension. It appears to be a massive space with arrows leading to one place on the ground. If you follow the arrows, you will eventually fall into a hole which you can then escape from. That was the guide for SCP-106. This took me quite a while to record, as getting every single pocket dimension took quite a while. If I missed anything, you can let me know down in the comments below. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. That was the 106 guide, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Alright, see ya.